Cheddar chimichangas, let's jump right into it. There are a few big topics to discuss right now. Number one, why did Meet Kevin sell 90% of his stocks in crypto? And is Tom Nash correct? Did he get margin called? So if you went into margin and they spread it across the board, and then as you saw in the past week, it crashed so low, he might have gotten margin called and then everything got liquidated. So I don't think he got margin called. I think at the end of the day, if he did, he would have been transparent about it. He has been transparent about those kinds of things before. And had he got margin called, he probably would have shared it. And if anything, that would have been a good cop out for him anyways, to let people know and let his subscribers know, Hey, I got margin called and that's why I had to sell out of all my positions. So I don't really think that that theory has any kind of weight to it. I think what really happened is his portfolio blew up like crazy. His net worth blew up like crazy. And he started to deviate from his strategy and said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to try to time the market. Maybe he panicked a little bit. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's a realtor. His net worth was maybe low six figures a few years ago, three years ago. And he basically ran, let's call it a $250,000 net worth up to 40 ish million dollars of a net worth in the span of two years, three years. He has made millions in AdSense, millions in core sales, and has also 15 to 20 X his Tesla holding as well as various other growth holdings that I'm sure ran in upwards of five, six, seven, eight X during the euphoric bull run that we had in 2020 and 2021. Remember that everybody that was long the market during that time frame made insane gains. Of course, anyone that's been following this channel would have made insane gains on some of our stocks. For example, Nouveaumont Graphite, which was a 10 X for us when we started talking about it in the 30 cent range. So I can't really blame the guy for getting paper hands and selling out of the market. But at the same time, I can't really have any sympathy for him either for all of the current backlash that he's getting. For the last two years where this niche on YouTube has really blown up, I think if anybody, it's been me, Kevin, who's been known as the buy the dip guy, at least for the last 24 months. And the biggest gripe in his comments section over the past few videos has been that he has contradicted exactly that. He's contradicted his motto and he's contradicted his overall investment thesis. He has always talked about not trying to time the market. And what is he doing here? He's trying to time the market. And what really doesn't make sense is the logic behind how he's doing it because he's only short a few percentage of that previous asset amount. We'll call it $20 million. He's only short a very, very fractional percentage of that 20 million. So by pulling everything out, He's in essence shorting the market by just not being long. So he is avoiding that risk of, of being along the market where there might be potential more pain, but he's not actually short the market as much as he should be if his conviction was that the market was going to drop another 10%. Now, I don't really know enough about what his goals are, of course. I don't know the guy that well, but the quality of life between a 40 and $50 million net worth and a $200 million net worth, it's not much different. I think a lot of people have said this before, the biggest difference in quality of life is once you get to that $1 billion threshold. So unless his goal is to get to that point, then maybe he does need to actively be doing these kinds of things. But at the end of the day with a 30, 40, $50 million net worth, he could easily just divvy it out between various safe dividend assets, real estates that's collecting rent and live fairly well off on all of that passive income. So those are kind of my thoughts on that. It's been a really hot topic today, especially for anyone in the YouTube finance niche. And it's been a topic of discussion on our discord as well. Let's get into number two. Is this the bottom in the current correction? Let me play this clip back from February 18th, 2021, almost one year ago after I sold most of my equity, almost all of my equity, including beloved names like Nouveaumont Graphite, which was up nearly 900%. So really the actual recovery from this crash in 2000, July 2000, you would not have fully recovered until 
let's say over here march 2013 that's when the market really started to take off from this position over here in july 2000 but let's look at the market right now are you really telling me that you want to be putting money into blue chip stocks etfs and dividend stocks as a long-term investment when the market is this high the writing was on the wall for 2022 first we saw the massive rotation out of small cap growth then we saw the rotation out of mid to large cap growth a lot of that went into those mega caps as a safe haven for cash but now we're finally seeing the rotation out of those mega caps because it's not safe. So is this the bottom? Hell, I don't know. Nobody knows. But as traders, all we can do, all you can do is take advantage of the volatility. What I do know is that mega cap names have been trading at ludicrous multiples and they were the next domino to fall. You can look at this market research from Yardeni posted every month and check the forward and trailing PEs for the S&P 500. We are still sitting near 2000.com bubble territory as you can see on both trailing and forward price to earnings ratios. Microsoft, a fantastic blue chip, carries a fairly large weight in the Nasdaq and S&P currently trading at a trailing and forward PE of 38. Now, the standard for what is considered fair value for price to earnings is between 20 and 25. So you could make the argument that Microsoft is still trading at a 50% premium. Nvidia, a 75 trailing PE and a 47 forward PE. Now you could make the argument that it is a growth name and its compounded annual growth rate is supposedly going to make up for its insanely sky high valuation but then you know where's the top where's the ceiling the point is there can always be an argument made for any valuation in the market because the market runs on sentiment and emotion as we all know if market participants are in the middle of a bull cycle and 100 for a growth mega cap is considered a fair pe then that's the fair pe at the time but if we look historically, usually there is some sort of ceiling before market participants and everybody go, oh shit, you know what, you're right. This is a little bit expensive. You know, we're getting a little bit out of hand here. We should probably tone it down a notch. And again, I will reference this historical data from Yardeni Research, which indicates to us that we're kind of in that time right now. Right here around early 21, Q2, Q3, 21, about six to eight months ago, it's exactly when I took my YouTube hiatus and I told you guys, I'm out of equities. I don't want any part of growth equities. And they've been getting slammed, I guess you could say the least, in those last six to eight month span. The goal of investing, again, not to be confused with trading, <laughs> is to find good deals on companies that are going to grow over time and reward their shareholders for that growth. And somewhere out there, Warren Buffett is twiddling his thumbs, laughing, having a giggle as the tortoise is starting to beat the hare. You can see here with Berkshire Hathaway passing ARK ETFs gains over the last two years now officially. That's really all my thoughts here for today on these hot two topics. Like, subscribe, comment, let me know your thoughts. Also follow me on Twitter if you haven't already at Money Mind Tweets. I do post more constant daily updates there. And if you want to support the channel, hey, you can become a patron. Check out the link for that in the description and the pinned comment. You can also check out CheddarTrading.com. It's going to get you access to our exclusive Discord community. We do post daily watch lists, constant buy sell alerts, and we do have weekly live trading streams. That is going to be it for this one, and I'll see you all in the next one.